when I think about love being a perfected thing, when, when I think about love being made perfect, it had to be in my mind, and, and no, I'm, I'm talking from my mind, that somewhere in us, we were loving in an imperfect way. And I, I want to get us to a place where we know where we're loving from. I have taught this thing several times about love. I've, I've gone through some great encounters to teach love and the different types of love and how love shows up in our life in our day to day i've 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 taught it i i have i can go to my briefcase and i can probably pull out five different packages packages that i took the time to research all the scriptures of love the styles of love and i put together packages that would teach me how to love. The most common love that we know as human beings is what? Filio. Huh? Feel your love. I love you. How you treat me. I love you. If you treat me right, filio I'm you. is not the most common. Filio is not the most common. And filio is not that one. You didn't give me filio. That was that. I'm, but I'm. A, I'm a come. I'm coming with it. I'm coming with it. I. I give me what you. Your most common. The most common type of love we as human beings deal with. That's your feeling? Eros? Eros! Oh, oh Eros. I was on mute. I said and, that way earlier. That was on mute. I didn't and, 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 and you ought to be... Oh, shut up, ain't it? Be, be, be nice. Be nice. Eros! Eros! <laughs> Eros is that Touchy feely, huggy kissy, humpy humpy, bumpy bumpy. <laughs> feeling. If if you said it, you didn't say it so that I could hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you know, yeah, I have my thing on mute. I didn't realize it, and then when I did, I I thought it off me. <laughs> okay. Eros. Eros is the most common type of love, and that is because we get excited about people more than we get excited about any anything else and i want to talk about eros for a moment i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because i don't want to embellish it i don't want to wake up the dead in some people <laughs> Well, I don't want to. I don't want to create a beast that is not necessary to live in something. Mm -hmm. But tonight, our topic is love. Tell me you love me. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Tell me you love me. And seeing that we went to Eros. Faster than we went to any other type of love. I want to I wanna give you the definition. It is love conceived by Plato's a, as a foundational creative impulse having a sensual element. It is the sensual side of love. It is that side that says, I got the happies about you. I, you excite me or you 
turn me on. If you ever seen somebody and 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 they look like what you want them to look like, they sound like what you want them to sound like, they smell like what you want them to smell like, they excite your senses. Uh-oh, y'all, y'all gonna be deep tonight. I see that. Okay. <laughs> Let's not do that. Huh? Let's not do that. Right. Let's not do that. Let's just have a real conversation so you can understand why you are the way you are, why you love the way you love. Because some people only love based on the sensual awakening instead of from another realm of love. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some Amen. people only love sensually they only get excited about the sensual side of love mm -hmm. Amen. That's and they sense. don't move outside of sensual love because that's the love that they know that's the love mm -hmm. that keeps them motivated that's the love that tends to cause them to feel alive But in all actuality, your sensual awakening is still a temporary fixation that is subject to change. Oh, well, I like them tall, dark, and handsome, or I like them thick and... <laughs> Well, you just go ahead and go there then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I like them thick and and I like them I like whoo God <laughs> that the song that my children be playing from the movie scene. Um, oh my God, look at her butt. Look look at his butt. Look at look at his chest. Look at his. <laughs> Come on. Well, we, we well, like, we, we like what pleases the eye. Yes, yes, yes. And because what pleases our eye gets us all flustered and, and emotional and intense mm -hmm. and, and, and purpose driven, we have a vision because, oh my God, look at them. They look like I want them to look. They sound like what I want them to sound like. And now I got to go get them and we're out of order. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Well, mm -hmm. that part right there. Mm -hmm. I'm out of order because I've let myself come out of my aligned place where God has divinely aligned me to do a particular thing. And then guess what? Guess what? Then because I'm sensually involved, my, my senses are involved. That's what sensual means. <laughs> To excite your senses. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself. Huh? Watch yourself, girl. I gotta go there because once, we. once you get my oh. senses, you you only captivated my to see, my mm -hmm. ear that hear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my sense of touch, the sense of smell. You only arouse my sensories. But guess mm -hmm. what happens? In a different environment, your senses change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. And so now, because I'm in a different environment, what was sensual over there is not sensual over here. And so now I'm trying to be the chameleon and I'm trying to play catch up with love in my senses. Mm -hmm. Well, gee. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So in this season, he don't have to be tall, dark, and handsome. Maybe he just need to be light skinned with a beard and a mustache. <laughs> maybe he don't need to wear um 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 curve, but maybe he just need to wear eternity wearing an old school fragrance. He don't need to have Stacy Adams on in this season. He just need to wear a white beater, as they call it, and, and a pair of tennis shoes. <laughs> well, because now my eye gate have changed. My mm -hmm. sensories are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
when the pollen come out, it messes with your eyes and your nose. Come on here. Your yes, ears it does. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it does. It is pollen season when stuff is pollinating. Oh God, I don't like y'all tonight. <laughs> when we're pollinating in love, when 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 we're budding, it tends to be only based on what he smell like, mm. or she oh. smell like, or they smell like. Whatever floats your boat is is it's based on that scent your nose okay. and so if you remember back in the days your mama used to say they got your nose wide open yeah <laughs> yes ma'am that was because you were in pollination <laughs> oh okay yeah i, I don't want to deal with y'all because see i i i need y'all to get where i'm at and i need y'all to understand how eros is an era waiting to happen okay because now my senses are heightened and I'm only caught up in you by what I see, hear, smell, touch, and taste. All of the five senses, right? Yeah, right, oh. right. So if I don't get to taste you, I don't love you. Come on here. Mm. Okay. I say if they don't eat, could God, I'm so glad it's all women on the line. Because if they don't eat no cat, they ain't the one for me. I, I don't want you because I need you to taste all of this. Can I wrong? Proceed. Mm -hmm. I like you. I like the fact that you got to smell like something. You can't mm -hmm. be no pole cat for me. You can't be somebody who don't take care of yourself and then think you're going to come get next to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because mm -hmm. you throw my senses off. Mm -hmm. Nothing about that is attractive. Nobody want to go to bed with somebody that smells funny. So mm -hmm. don't. You're right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Nobody want to go to bed. Nobody want to mm -hmm. make love to somebody who, who mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who really don't heighten their senses. Mm -hmm. You got to come through and please all of my senses. That's Eros. Mm. I got to be able to handle your touch, your taste, your smell. I got to be able to handle all of that, what you look like. So if you're sloppy, if um, come mm -mm -mm. I'm not going after somebody who don't know how to put their clothes on. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not going to allow you to distract or distort my vision because I'm into you sensually. I'm, we like candles for sensuality. Mm -hmm. And so now here we are dealing with the sensual side of love. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to be loved by somebody. Mm -hmm. But what happens when love is only based on your senses? God forbid you go blind. God forbid. Are you still going to be able to love me? Mm. No, because I didn't have a foundation outside of my senses. God forbid I lose my sense of hearing. And now you don't even sound like what I want. Uh-oh, I can't hear you talk to me because you used to talk a good game. And we say women fall in love between our ears. Men fall in love with their eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. What happens when they go blind? What happens when we go deaf? It's only based on eros. 
if it's only based on eros and i have no sense of security can i still love you will i still love you no because it's no foundation it's eros it is the lust uh, it it is the love based on my senses, sensuality, mm. predicated in good terms. It's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. and the pride of life. If if we just gonna be honest, mm -hmm. how many people are in marriages, in relationships that are based on the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh? and the pride of life how many people probably how a many lot. people don't know it's probably a lot it is a lot mm -hmm. in 2011 we were having a girls trip me and some of my girlfriends and we were all coming together from different places because one of my girlfriends was getting ready to get married and we really wanted to pour into her and speak life to her to encourage her in her coming up nuptials. He was a very well off man, but he was a good looking man. He, he looked good. So I asked her, what did you fall in love with? why do you love him enough to marry him and she said girl that thing is fine she said and i love how good he look and i asked her was that the only thing that made her want to marry him and she said yes I said to her, I said, God forbid, if something happened to your husband after you marry him and your only foundation is his good looks, but something happened and take his good looks away, what kind of marriage are you going to have? She said, well, I'm not going to look at no ugly man. But mm. that money sure would be pretty. Mm. Mm -mm. And I got vexed. I was vexed in my spirit because that's not love. Mm -mm. That's the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. They got married. They went on their honeymoon. And while they were on their honeymoon, they went jet skiing. She hydroplaned and came down across his pretty face. Right on her honeymoon, as he was in the hospital getting his face reconstructed, she told him, we can't be together. I can't be with you because you don't even look like what I would have for a husband. Mm. Now, this man is sitting there, and at this point, they don't know if he's going to make it or not because he is having blood transfusions, and he's going through a whole lot. And she left him in the hospital because he no longer was sensual to him. The nurse that took care of him became his new wife. And she loved his cut up face because she fell in love with a broken man. Mm. What's your point, Apostle? Sensual love is not permanent love. It's spelled E-R-O-S, but it should be spelled E-R-O-S. A, era. 
We get caught up in the sensual, but not in the real love. We we I've heard a lot of your 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 decision makings for love. Why you love like you do. And most of us don't have foundational love. And so it doesn't surprise me that your relationship with God is like it is because if you knew the love of God, you would know how to love other people. Let's go. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying tonight. I'm going to try to make this good for you. So I'm, I need somebody to get 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5 through 9. I need somebody to get Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. I need somebody to get Hebrews 13 and 4. And I need somebody to get Proverbs 5, 18 through 19. Got Hebrews? Hebrews 13 and 4. All right, I'll do that one. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. 1 Corinthians 7, 5 through 9. Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. Tasha, you said you got Hebrews 13 mm -hmm. and 4? Mm-hmm. I got Ecclesiastes. Okay, Ecclesiastes 9 and 9 is Brittany. I have Hebrews 13 and 4. Tasha, Tasha got 13 and 4. She she claimed that one first. Oh, I'm sorry. Proverbs 5, 18 and 19. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so now the only one left is 1 yeah. Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians. Get what? First Corinthians seven, five through nine. Seven. Chapter seven, verses five through nine. Oh. You got it. When you get it, let me know you got it. Got it. I I got, got it. it. Okay. okay, so who's reading First Corinthians for me? I, I do it. I read it. Okay, First Corinthians seven five through nine. Read. Okay, defraud ye not one one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and praying and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency, but I inconsistency. inconsistency. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man has his proper gift of God, one after this matter and another after that. I Therefore, say it to the unmarried and widow. It is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to burn. Go to the next one. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. Okay, it reads, um, live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest, lovest what in this English heart, all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he has given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest, takest under the sun. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 13. 
Okay. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Mm. Proverbs. Proverbs 5, verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed. Let, let, their, let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind kind. and kind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times and be thou ravished always with her love. Mm. Those are sensual things. Those are sensual things. Those are eras. Those are places of sensuality. And we we look at these places and it says marriage is honorable in all and the bed is undefiled for whoremongers and adulterers god will judge and he will and he will ecclesiastes tell us to be excited and be joyful in the in the days of the life of thy vanity that's given to us under the sun and and, and and that thy portion in this life and in thy labors which thou takest under the sun but love all the days of your life love the days of your life we need to learn to 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 be loving and to be affectionate and to be serious but then here the first corinthians 7 it gives us instruction about marriage it says defraud ye not one another except for consent for a time that ye may give yourselves in fasting and prayer and come together again that satan tempt you not for your inconsistency in contency and somebody say that for me what's the verse again contingency verse five contingency contingency so i don't need to play around with the devil where my marriage is concerned mm -hmm. and think that i can be mad and keep my body from my husband um because he no longer turned me on because that's that's what happens when you don't when you mad you feel like you got a right to keep yourself come let me look at y'all while i talk to y'all mm -hmm. <laughs> look he said defraud don't you steal don't you cheat don't you rob nobody of what belong to them uh oh it don't belong to them it's mine i don't want i gotta walk around with it i gotta do this okay but guess what when you're married your body don't belong to yourself when i get married my body won't belong to me i don't get to say what i can and can't do with my body because it belonged to my husband. My mm -hmm. husband can't say what he can and will do with his body because his body belonged to me. And we get upset when, when we see the word submit, submit to your own for it's right in the Lord. Oh, we get mad mm -hmm. when we see that. It's a cuss word that, that, that people just don't want to say is a cuss word, but, but it's not a cuss word render do benevolence to them give them what's due them defraud ye not mm -hmm. that satan don't come in and tempt you well him, i don't care i don't want it so i don't care if the enemy come in well mm -hmm. guess what happens when you leave space for the enemy to sit in your marriage he gonna do just that and he gonna mm -hmm. bring division and a house divided against itself is gonna do what uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's going to fall. Wow. It can't stay. You can't stay connected when you allow a disconnect. Well, let's talk about this with God. I, I just want to bring it back to God. How, how can I be faithful to God if I can't be faithful to my neighbor? Okay, Sister Lee. I have a question. Well, I have a comment, I think. Question, comment. You said that about submit. I think uh -huh. a lot of times people have a problem with submission because church, they took that word and they twisted it and it made the, the women feel like they had to do this 
to, towards their husband and the husband had all the power over their wives. And, and it came up to me, I, mean, I could be wrong, but it seems like a lot of, I can't speak for any other nationality, but a lot of African-American churches took that as a, a way for men to be overpowered, to overpower women. That's just how I've seen it. Okay. Because they've taken that submit and say, you have to submit to me regardless, like you were saying, regardless of how you feel, how you think, or whatever, you have to still submit to me. And I believe, this is me thinking, I believe if, I t if I'm married to a, a man and, he tell, and I tell him I don't feel well and, or I'm, I, I, you know, this, I'm just tired, then I think that person should respect my wishes also. I shouldn't just have to submit my body to him because he that's what he wants and vice versa. If if we have an agreement and we have communication and we have understanding and within the relationship, then he needs to respect that I may be tired or whatever I may be or vice versa. But but people have taken that word submit to, to where you're going to do what I say regardless because that's what the Bible says instead of looking at the whole text of what it meant at the time. I like your key, you made the key point and it wasn't the part of submission. Your key point is this, that you gotta communicate. That's the key yeah. point. The key point is if I respect you and you respect me, no, I won't always get my way in the relationship. You won't always get your way in the relationship, but we communicate and we come to a place of agreement. Can two walk together except they agree? No. So yes, you made a very valid point. Yes, submission has been twisted to make it look like a particular thing that's distasteful. But it still tells the husband to do likewise. So it, the husband, it tells the husband it tells the husband to treat your wife like Christ, and I'm paraphrasing, treats the church. Well, you know, loves the church. So if if that's the case, then they should not be disrespectful to the wife. Right. It is learning to communicate through the good, the bad, the ugly. Some, some conversations we have to have because they are necessary. Some things we have to learn to set boundaries and, and because it's necessary. I think what I found and I'm picking my words, so just, just bear with me. What I found is that in as much as I'll use, I'll use the term Sister D just used for the time, considering the time that this text was written, considering the time that they were in, what was said, what was happening, I think people use that for a time to say, well, it's not of effect. It means it doesn't mean anything. And it's okay if that's where you are, but then the whole book was written in a different time. It wasn't written for us as we are today if we look at that. If we look at certain texts, I was doing a script, I was doing a study that required me to look at Old and New Testament. And I went into other things that are not in the, the Bible as we know it. But I was studying. And when I said, wow, God, this this gives place to the law of the land having more preeminence than your word because there are certain things that the law of the land 
has said or done to override the word of God, but the Bible tells us to do what? Obey the laws of the land. Right. So if I'm obeying the laws of the land and I'm dis disallowing the, the fact that the word is the word and right, right by itself, then the time that I'm in, I don't, I don't have no room to complain about what's happening in the world because the law of the land says this is what happens. No, it's still a standard to God. God still has a standard. And I can't take away his word to suit my own my own I ain't talking about nobody else i can't change his word to take away what i want to make it what i want when he said no give due benevolence surrender yourself submit yourself submit your ways learn how to communicate I need to learn to communicate so that when I want to make a point, whether my point is received or not, at least I was able to make the point. At least you know what I was thinking. And I don't have to feel like I, I don't have a voice. Because some people feel like submission means you no longer have a voice. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. I still have a voice. It's how I use my voice. That makes the difference. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. We, we can go outside yes, every picket sign we want to hold. But is that what God told us to do? Mm. Mm hmm when when okay let's 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 take that another direction the bible says if i think that that my that my brother have an all against me mm -hmm. that i'm supposed to leave my gift at the altar mm -hmm. and i'm supposed to go to my brother and i'm supposed to fix that thing that's broken between my brother and i and then we mm -hmm. come back and we present the gift mm -hmm. we're reconciled but what happens when there's no spirit of reconciliation? You still have to forgive. You still have to forgive that person because it doesn't fall on them. It falls on you. So when you still, because if there's an honest and that person does not receive it, you still forgive and you pray for that person because you don't want that to be within your spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is why we learn how to love God's way. That's why we get to learn how to love God's way. Because God has a way that is right, right by itself. There's no error in loving God's way. So when I say teach me how to love you, tell me how to you love me tell me that you love me not with your words not with your words with your life with the way you handle me with the way you do that you and i communicate if you if you could tell me how wrong i am and i can hear you tell me that i'm wrong that's me hearing you say that you love me because how many people you know love you gonna let you run out in front of a moving car how many people you know that love you gonna let you put a gun in your mouth and pull the trigger but what happens is Eunice said her love language is accountability Nobody want to hold nobody accountable. And you get mad when somebody tell you that you're wrong. 
And so now you don't want to talk no more. You want to go get quiet. But no, we're supposed to be able to reason together. People say, why do you always call these doggone meetings? Because we got to reason together. I need y'all to know where I'm at. I need to know where y'all at. I don't need to think that it's about me. You may have a feeling about something that I need to be aware of so that I can navigate in a way that works for everybody. But what happens when you're involved with somebody? And I know for a fact that most of us have been involved with somebody that wanted the whole relationship to go in their favor the way they wanted it, the way they said it should be, and they had no room for give or take. Mm -hmm. You didn't stay there very long. And if you did... There was no way you could have been happy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're in it together and I'm learning to love you and I'm learning. I, I'm hoping to teach you how to love me. I'm hoping that I can give you what it takes to know that when I think of you, that my thoughts are not just for the pleasing of the flesh, that I'm concerned about your total man. You ever been with somebody that never knew anything about you that made you feel like they had invested in you? Have you ever been with somebody who never invested in you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes ma'am. They don't know nothing that you like. They don't know. They don't know when the last time you went to the skating rink. They don't know the last time you went to the movies. They don't even know if you like the movies. They don't. They haven't invested in your mental health. They haven't invested anything but learning how to please the flesh. Flesh. All right. They don't even know what color you like. Right. They know nothing about you. Maybe allergic to flowers. I'm just saying. And they'll bring you a bouquet <laughs> from the dollar store. <laughs> from the dollar store. And you'll be sneezing and you'll be barfing and, and they don't even know why. Why? Because I'm allergic to them generic flowers. If you're going to bring me some flowers, can I please have some roses? Can <laughs> There are people that don't know how much I love roses. Mm -hmm. And I don't just like red roses. I like the multicolored roses. I like the roses with the different colors because every color have a different smell. Mm -hmm. I told Mike, I said, do not send me no flowers. If you want me to know that you're intentional, you bring me no flowers and put them in my hand. I don't want no Teleflores flowers. I need to know that I was worth the thought of you going into a place, picking up me some flowers, and I need to know that you intended for me to have them fresh. Because you bring them and they wilted. I don't want them. That wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. You seeing somebody, look, you send them over here with that flower truck. I'm going to think you did something you ain't had no business doing and you trying to make up for it. <laughs> Don't plant that on my mind. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people think that way and be honest? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I, I don't want Tamika raise their hand. Yeah. Did you have something? I didn't to want to say nothing. I was a, I was agreeing okay. with you. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want negative thoughts on my mind. Mm -hmm. Not where love is supposed to be, because love keeps no account of wrong, honey. When you said that this morning in prayer, I was seeing me throwing my phone at you. <laughs> because how many of us got a score sheet? <laughs> 
Mm. Oh, you did this. Oh, you said that. Oh, you made me feel like this. Oh, you. <laughs> I thought we got past that. Yeah. I thought we already dealt with that. And every time we get into an argument, the same thing keep coming up. Why? Because we haven't got to the root of it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Love keeps no account of wrong it's not selfish but mm -hmm. if i'm loving you like i should love you it's because i have had an encounter with god mm -hmm. you believe that mm -hmm. yes there is no way i can love you if i've not had an encounter with god mm -hmm. there is absolutely no way not the real love. I can't give you real love until I've had an encounter with real love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real love, it is unconditional. It teaches you how to love unconditionally. Not, not based on my senses. Because again, when, when it's allergy season, <laughs> you got me messed up. I can't love you because I can't smell you. My eyes are watering. I can't see you. My mm -hmm. allergies get so bad sometimes that my eyes close. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So there go Eros out the window because my senses are on. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. I, I don't think y'all understand where I really want to go with this. But until we learn how to love Christ, until we learn to be committed to God, to, let's, let's just look at this. Agape love is unconditional love. Right. It is the highest form of love, charity, and the love of God for man and man for God. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That's, that's it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us so much that he didn't want us to perish. He loved us so much that he gave his son to die for us. He loved mm -hmm. us so much that he said, I've been trying to save y'all from Genesis. And here I am over in Matthew, Luke, John, and I'm telling y'all, I got to get y'all free because because everything that I do, I got to make sure I'm sorry, you guys. I got to make sure that I'm giving my best, that I'm giving my best to God. Well, if I can't give you my best, because my love is supposed to represent my servitude to God. Mm -hmm. You believe that? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes just says whatsoever you do mm -hmm. do heartily as unto the Lord mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do it as unto God every single day every single step every single hour when I get frustrated I don't need to pour out my cup of fury on people I need to learn how to deal with me and that's what I've been working on is me because I can't change anybody but me Amen. yes I, I, can t I can give you all the tools I have in my belt but I can't make you use them. I can't make you want to walk in this. This love. I can't make you want to walk in unconditional. Mm -hmm. 
Because what happens is when I'm trying to convey the heart that I have for you, mm -hmm. have you ever tried to show somebody? I'm, 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 I'm trying to paint the picture. Have you ever tried to show somebody how you felt for them? But what you did didn't come out quite right for them. Mm -hmm. they didn't see it as love yeah they didn't see it as you trying mm -hmm. to show them how you felt sister mm -hmm. D I saw you move your light on no they didn't see it as this is them showing love mm -hmm. But when I show you love, when I show you love, I want you to know that it's love, right? Is there a difference in the presentation of love and lust? Yes. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, I say yes. I say yes. Yes. He said yes. Latasha said yes. What's the question? Brittany it's... said no. Brittany shaking her head no. The question no. is, is there a difference in the presentation of lust yes, and love? Tamika said no. Sister D said yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tanisha said yes, it is. Tasha said no. Did you check your head? No. I can't hear you. Hello? Uh-huh. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't even know. I think I said the same thing. I don't really know. I, 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 I think it depends. Uh, I mean, some people love may be lust. I don't know. I don't know. Lust can't be love. It's the presentation. Yeah, the presentation is the presentation. Right. The presentation can look exactly the same. But the attributes of what if, if it's really love or lust are two different things. But it can look the exact same. Yeah. I can lust after the most finest thing God knows walk this earth mm -hmm. and actually meet him and my whole mindset change but desiring wanting craving having that I, I need I need I need fiend moment <laughs> is completely how you gonna know it's two different things cause you can I, how how would you know if I love you, hypothetically, if I love you, right, I'm going to want to be around you. I'm going to want to smell you still. I'm going to want to hold your hand. I'm going to want to go do things with you. I'm going to go out of my way to be in your space. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. Because how many people do you know that lust, that lust, lust, that take the time to want to be around you and not take you to your bedroom because yeah, the mother does true. not always want to go to your bedroom. Yeah, that's Lust true. Want to go in the back seat of the car. Lust want to go in the park. Lust want to go on the in, in the living room sofa. Lust want to go in the bathroom. L look, oh, Lust don't give do my dog go. Let's go to the mall, and I'll give it to you in the bathroom because now in the mall they got bathrooms for family. We family dog on it. Let's go get it done in the mall. Being adventurous, lust, <laughs> lust, love knows how to behave. Love knows how to behave. Love knows how to give you the strength to make it through what looks like a hard, hard time. <laughs> love is supportive. Mm -hmm. Love is love intentional. Is Yes, God. <laughs> listen, when people listen, 
when people are operating in lust, they will they don't have a choice but have the spirit of rush about them. Okay. You say the spirit they of rush? Why they see rush. Rush. Okay. While the opportunity, <laughs> while the window of opportunity <laughs> is open, while they think your defenses are down, they feel like, okay, I done came over, I done told her she looked good, I done told her I like how she looked, and now I got her in a vulnerable place. Let me go ahead and let, knock, knock, knock. Okay. You know, Hey baby, let me see. Let me let me kiss you. Let me let me let me rub your boobs. Let me touch your butt. Let me let me let me. A two o'clock call. Come on. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Honey, look. <laughs> they know I took my shower at nine thirty, and they want to call at ten. <laughs> no, this house you can't come in after ten o'clock. You're not my husband. I'm not married to you. You don't get to come in. Mm hmm. Cause see so now I'm, the, I'm comfortable. So it is in the presentation. My present, my presentation, my presentation is what will decide how I receive your presentation. Your presentation. Cause see, some mm -hmm. of us, some of us, <laughs> is so cocky that we don't we we want to be pursued like that we don't want to be treated like a lady that who 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 who, who sung that song treat her like a lady yeah treat her like a lady somebody we, <laughs> like a lady. Mm -hmm. we want to be slapped it up and whipped it and rubbed it down and <laughs> <laughs> not my daddy Apostle, you know, when, when I can only speak for myself, so I know when I was going out doing my thing, that was, I, hey, if I put on a certain dress, if I put on, let's say I had a, I had this gray dress, I had on gray heels, everything matched, and my intention was somebody going to catch, I'm going to catch somebody's eye. If I put on my red dress and my red shoes and whatever, my intention was I was going to catch somebody's eye. Not they was going to catch me. I was out to look. I was on the hunt. Okay, so that, that was my presentation. And I was in lust. I was not in love. But when love found me. Love take over, honey. When love, love found me, when true love found me, I didn't have to put on all of that to go hunting and looking and seeking because true love came to me, me. through the love of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to go out there and present myself like that. I'm just, I'm just transparent right now. I'm just telling you like it is for me. I don't know about nobody else, but I know what mm -hmm. I used to do. You know, if I, if, if I didn't have everything from, from the top to the bottom straight. And I mean, I, I'll tell you this real quick. I went out one night, I had on my fur coat. I had on a, I don't even know what color dress I had or everything. And this man, he walked up to me. He said, could he buy me a drink? I said, no, I don't want it. He said, well, why did you come out? I said, I came out because I wanted to. He said, well, you, you shouldn't present yourself that way. I said, I present myself the way I want to present myself. He told me that because the way I look, I, he perceived me to be high, high end. So it is in about presence. So when I was able to not say, I don't want to have nobody to look at me like this. I changed my perspective on as my a woman. Presentation. As a woman. That's right. You changed your presentation. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And now don't nobody you, talk to me. So. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So what? Uh, that's temporary. That's temporary. That's temporary. <laughs> But I'm okay with that. I have learned to accept that. You know, I know God loves me. I know Jesus loves me. So I'm like, because I was like, do I have a stamp on my head or something? Don't talk to her. <laughs> but you know, I've, been, I've been told, I've been told I got one. I, 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 I've been told, they told me you got a nigga, please look. <laughs> I said, a what? You got a nigga, please look. And I said, well, what's a nigga, please look? Nigga, please try me so I can show you how to get about your business. I said, oh, I didn't know that. But I'm glad to know that it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, so. glad, I'm glad to know that it's there. That means only people that are discerning will know 
how to approach me. <laughs> then only the only the right people need to step to me anyway. I don't know if you all did you all look at John? I, I came on late. I apologize. Did you all look at John 15 already? I mean it's a whole Not okay. Yet. I don't want to I don't want to jump then. Yeah, that's 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 my ace in the hole, sister D. That's oh, I'm my sorry. ace in the hole. I, I just it was just remnant from this morning <laughs> that I've um, been reading. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to say this in lieu of what Sister D said, I, I can recall my own actions. You know, I like to tell on me, right? Y'all, if y'all know me at all, y'all know I love to tell on me. Mm -hmm. I remember having this white two-piece outfit. The, 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 the top was a long top. It had a few buttons, but it, it started buttoning maybe right here at the bottom, like at, just at the top of the good part of your cleavage to show off all your good goodness right here. And it has some shorts to go up on it. So the splits came all the way up on the side and all the way up in the front and honey i i knew how to work the i knew how to work them splits so they flap like i wanted them to flap and honey when i put that little outfit on i knew what it was going to be and i said so i used to have this little place i like to go so that i could act the monkey and, and i would tell them i let's go shoot pool because that's where all the cute guys were and i didn't just like regular guys i like the older guys that i knew were a little more stable them guys and so i would i would i would put myself in position so that the people would would know that i meant business with what i was doing and so i would go to the pool place to shoot pool and i would say um know how to shoot pool and you know what i knew how to shoot pool because we had a pool table at our house come on <laughs> come on and, and and we played the mind games i played the mind games because i wanted the attention i wasn't after love i was after eros i was mm -hmm. after the touch mm -hmm. And I didn't want no commitment. See, I wasn't playing that game, but I'm a commit. I'm a commitment girl now. <laughs> but honey, when I put that little get up on, and and and, and, and me and I tell them, I bet you I'll beat you. And it, no, and they saying you don't even know how to let them I look. Let them school me a whole game. I bet you I'll beat you. If I beat you, can I have what I want? Uh uh. <laughs> the devil that's right nothing but the devil that was that was me and my <laughs> foolishness of fooling they folly that's right that's right so the next game i had to go ahead and beat them because i knew what i wanted and i got it me and my little white dress Sometimes we got to recognize that our presentation makes an invitation that we really not inviting people to, mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. even in our sanctified mind. Mm -hmm. Some of us Come still on. have body language that's inviting when we know we're not making an invitation. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> And so when we already have these these body gestures and this this verbiage that indicates availability when we're really not even available Do you know that if I gave my body to anybody right now that I would be cheating I would be committing adultery Mm hmm. I come in the door, lady. You're not married. You better mm -hmm. watch your mouth, your lamb. Yeah. 
Yes, I am. <laughs> you are in a committed relationship. I'm married. I'm, I am definitely in a committed relationship. And mm -hmm. I've been in it for a long time. With Jesus. That's exactly right. I am the bride of Christ. Of Christ. And so when I use his body and I give his body to something or someone else. Mm. See, people think, yeah, people think you were talking about your, phys your physical, physical relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But, but you uh, married it. And, and, and let me tell you something. Let, let me tell you something. Today I was and, and I wasn't in this place, but God was talking to me about a place. Let me, can I make that clear before I finish mm -hmm. the statement? Because I, I ain't got time for no foolishness. Mm -hmm. God was talking to me about cheating. He was talking to me about cheating and people that cheat. And he mm -hmm. said to me, even when you masturbate. Mm -hmm. You're committing adultery. Mm -hmm. And I said, huh? And he said, because your mind is not on me. You're not, you're not pleasing your flesh thinking of me. Mm -hmm. He said, and you're opening yourself up to pagan gods. And he began to show me how even in the Bible, women were having sex with gods, with, with spirits that were not of God. And that's why we have people who are giants. And I say, oh my God, I know mm -hmm. a family that everybody in the family for the most part is six foot four and better. In mm -hmm. our time today, that is considered a giant. Mm -hmm. And he told me it's because of their demonic sex life. I said, shut the front door. <laughs> it ain't because they grow so good and he showed me from generation to generation and I said God wait just a second he said listen when you open the door he said go back to the book and read it he said it is in there where those babies that were conceived by those gods by those spirits those fertility gods, you know, when those women left their husbands and went to go have sex with the fertility god. Mm. Who read that besides me? Mm. Who read that besides me? Don't don't. I don't want y'all to think I'm 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 somewhere no, from tulips. Who read that besides me? I remember reading <laughs> something like that in the Old Testament, right? The Old That's Testament. Exactly right. it's uh -huh. Testament. It's yeah, and they would have babies and, and it was giant. And they go back to their husbands yeah. and it would look as though they conceived with their husband. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. But that's so God talked about masturbation to me today. And he was telling me about all these strange gods that we bring in. Because mm -hmm. now you're having your mind is with a woman, with a man, with a dog, with a cat, with a rat. Your mind is entertaining all kinds of foolishness. You done mm -hmm. made up a whole person to be in your space and place. And you can't say that your mind ain't traveling while you're doing it. That's right. That's, that's right. And so is God pleased? No. Mm -mm. And if you're married and you're masturbating, uh, <laughs> mm. it's well, adultery. Yeah, still the same thing. Mm -hmm. But doesn't didn't didn't Paul talk to um when he went to Ephesus to talk about the spirit of Diana that was in the city of Ephesus? That's why he he was so hard on them because of the idol because of Diana was a god of fertility and they were all the virgins were all going to Diana or had statues of Diana. Mm -hmm. The women. Mm -hmm. And so we've incorporated a lot of things. Yes, ma'am, Sister D. We've incorporated a lot of things. And we think that it's okay. Oh, well, I'm just doing this so I can get ready for my husband. I'm just doing this so that when he come, I'll be right. Okay, well, go ahead and get yourself right. But you're getting right to play with the devil. Mm. 
That's why that's they can't that. satisfy you. Masturbate people who masturbate are very hard to satisfy sexually. Why? Because you caused yourself a longer time to get to your point. Most men don't have that kind of stamina. They tell me that a woman can look down longer than a man can look up or, or, or vice versa. A, 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 a woman can look up longer than easier than a man can look down. That's what it is. He can't look down but so long before he busts. And you done played with yourself and played with yourself and got yourself all conditioned to be long when, when, he, when he ain't but a five minute man if that. And God bless the day you, you make him last longer than he, he feel like Hercules. Stop it. Stop it. Real love comes from the Father. And when you meet that person that is designed for your life, and we're going to stop because there's so much more I want to go into, but every, every week we're going to deal with love until we finish it. Because by the time we finish love, I want us to know how to love people. Because mm -hmm. some of us don't know how to love. Some of us are so bitter that we're not living in love. Mm -hmm. Some of us are so hurt that we are not living in love. And we let those things rest on the thrones of our heart. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, hey, I want to free you. But I can't even get free because why? I'm holding on to it in my heart where I say God reside. He keeps saying, give it to me. He gave us amnesty and some mm. of us are still in our prisons. Mm. Or I should say some of y'all still in y'all prison because baby, I came out with my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise because I, I know what he freed me from. I know what I had already presented at the altar saying, God, take this from me. Don't let me continue to walk like this. Don't let me let don't let me hold on to this hurt. Don't let me hold on to unforgiveness. I had I had a list of stuff that I had already started asking him about. And when he said amnesty, amnesty is just that amnesty. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so when he said amnesty, I ate it. I took on the whole bit of it. And some of you didn't. It's showing your continence. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's showing your posture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God is saying, therefore, if the sun made you free, you're free indeed. <laughs> What's your problem? Yeah. The problem is, I didn't let him do it. First, I say, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, Thank you, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. I said, God, you're you're getting ready to send me to California. You're, you're getting ready to send me to Africa. And when I tell y'all, even today, I. They sent me a message from Africa that blew my whole mind. I had to sit still and be quiet. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. When I tell you we're going to be in several parts of Africa, South Africa, West Africa, we Johannesburg is wealthy. And they already said, we need you in Johannesburg. It is a wealthy place. Johannesburg is, is calling us. It's calling us. And they said that what they want from us is for us to cover them and to come and fellowship with them. And it's nothing to them what it's what it would cost us, they'll take care of. It. Mm. That's what they told me. So when you become our covenant, our covering, we don't care what it'll cost to get you to us. We'll take care of. It. And mm. every person that travel with you will take care of them. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. That's see, I don't know about y'all. That's a blessing. But that bless me. Mm -hmm. Because one, all they ever heard is a video clip of me preaching. Mm -hmm. 
All they ever had a chance to do was see us when we were feeding Sister D over there on Chestnut Street. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they got a chance to see us feeding over there. And I was like, wow, God. Wow, God. When we were hauling bread by, by the truckloads. <laughs> Didn't know how God was going to make a way, but he made a way. Mm -hmm. Listen, weeks we would go. Three, four times a week was only supposed to go one time a week. And where we were supposed to pay, we didn't have to pay. <laughs> I can testify. I sure can to that. God, where his favorite guys he provides. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying to you guys is it's God's love that keeps us doing what we do. <laughs> we didn't take up no offerings. We didn't say you could come get food, but you got to come visit the church. We didn't say you could come get food, but we got to pray for you. That ain't how we rolled. Y'all come get the stuff. Y'all need some food. Y'all need some clothes. Y'all need some blankets. Y'all need some water. Come get this stuff. <laughs> Well, are y'all going to pray for us if you want us to pray? We're not asking y'all to let us pray for y'all. The Spanish people fell in love. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Why? Because it was our heart to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave y'all. I'm going to leave y'all right there. <laughs> I'm going to leave y'all right there. Because because it's imperative that we fall in love with God. Just like we took the time to fall in love with a human being, just like we found the time to, to invest in somebody, even though they broke our heart in a million pieces. Mm -hmm. Did it stop us? Sister D, did it stop us? Didn't stop me. They they lied on us. Honey, people were hating on us left and right. Didn't stop me. It didn't stop us. Mm -mm. They, they would come so that they could see what we were doing. We were doing and go back. <laughs> and go back and talk about it. And tell it, yeah. Didn't stop me. But it didn't stop us. Mm -mm. Oh, ma'am. When it's Matter from God. God gave us increase after We'd go over and, like you say, we didn't have to pay for it. But then they'd say, here, we got extra. And they just start giving us extra. We, mm. It is ours. God. <laughs> the Ava Oprah, remember, we went to get food. And they opened up the, uh, the that storehouse where we had all the cosmetics and, the, the, and the, yes. whatever else. That yes. nobody else had even knew what knew that was there. Right. Right. They gave us they allowed us to go into their thrift store. So for free. For, for nothing. free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> Invited us to, to, to they celebrate Christmas and all this. It was just a, yeah. Yeah, it was miracles. It was. Then we did the Thanksgiving. And we, yeah. we only had two turkeys, right? Wasn't it just two yeah. turkeys? And how many people we feed? 300 or something know. like that? We know. fed 300 people. I, I and then the last, I counted and then was we, 110, something like that, 105. One, 105. And 105. then I cried. I sat there and I cried. Sister D said, Apostle, what is it? If you want to do more, we can do more. Let's yeah. just do it. And I said, and the Lord had just told me, had you told me what you wanted to do, don't you think I would have made it happen? Can you still do? And I said, Lord, I, I'm not satisfied. I just look yeah. at all these people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we got done, it was over 300 people we fed. Yeah. And, and then we still went back and ate. And then That's we still, still back went back yep. and had After we were done, we, boy, we all ate good. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. Sure mm -hmm. did. There was so much. And, and, and take the heart for God for that kind of stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it take a heart for God. Mm -hmm. 
I said, God, wait a minute. These people are outside and they need some blankets. And let it rain and seem like we get two truckloads of blankets. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was rain because those blankets, once they got wet, wasn't no good. Well, ain't no good. Because mm -hmm. they were wool blankets. So then they give us some more blankets. Go get them. Come get these blankets and take them away from here. Mm -hmm. I even broke took some to Springfield and St. Louis. Uh huh. Yes. Loaded up the car. Which sure did. Is the love walk that's necessary? What's your love walk? Mm. What's your love language? I told mm. y'all, some of y'all got, we're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. <laughs> we're going to get it right. You know, what, Pastor, to. real quick, and one thing I know, I have not been to Africa, um, but I've heard people like the pastor that I used to go, those people, <laughs> when you come, and you minister, they treat you like royalty. They 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 respect you so much that you because I know when they came when 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 I when the pastor came back, he came back with so much. He said he some of the stuff he couldn't even bring back with him. They just showered him with so much. And it's not about the shit, the gifts and stuff. It's just it's just they appreciate what we what what the word of God brings to them, you know, and they show it by whatever food, clothes, hospitality, they show mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say it like this. We lost that connection. We lost that, that some of that connection, you know, some of us still have that hospitality and love and kindness in our, in our DNA, but we lost a lot of that. So I, I believe that us going to this, on this journey, and I won't say trip, it's a journey. We're going to another level. God will show us an abundance of love and kindness and 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 sisterhood and brotherhood and fellowship that we have not experienced here mm -hmm. in America. Absolutely. Now that's just how I feel about it. You know, from what I've heard other people say, how how kind and respectful and how hungry the people are for the word. So yeah. there's a great expectation that we will go, but we will also receive not just material mm -hmm. things, but the love, the love mm -hmm. of a nation. Because we go into the different, we don't, they don't, they have nations. That's right. Nation nation. Of, yeah. So we're going to different, we're not just going to a country like America and states. It's the nation of South, uh, the nation of Chad, the nation of Ghana, the nation. So we go into nations and we have to be prepared with that love to receive the love that we, we might not ever see in America from, from the body of Christ. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm excited about us going to Africa. I'm, ex I'm excited about going to Africa with you guys. I've been there, so I'm excited to be there with you guys. And to see God move through us. That's what I'm excited about. Because I know that he's opened the door. Only. And as much as, you know, I thank God for Bishop. I thank God for my Bishop. I thank God for him just allowing me to just be free with him to uh, to pull him along my journey because I have to take him in a different direction because I know that there's greater in him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm grateful that he doesn't begrudge me the opportunity to do it. I could, I could easily have been selfish and just said, okay, Bishop, please cover me while I go to Africa. But that ain't what I felt in my spirit. Mm -hmm. It, it ain't what I feel in my spirit. I feel that every person that go, when we come back, we won't be the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'll be hard yeah. for you to go and come back the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'll be hard. I think maybe that's why I like foreign movies, because I think I see a difference in the other countries and just sometimes do some of the little things I see. 
Maybe little points, maybe not every little thing, but I think I see little points that are different in some of the movies. A whole different world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A whole different mindset, you know? It is a different mindset in other countries than mm -hmm. here. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, just, you know, I used to watch Reinhardt Bunky and how he would do those crusades and, and just, just how mm -hmm. the people, or even uh, Marilyn uh, Hickey, people that would just go over and they, and you could just feel. I mean, it, the language was a barrier, true enough, but you could feel, watching it on TV, you could still feel the anointing. Because I know I watched Marilyn Hickey and I've watched Reinhardt Bunky and it was, uh, I can't, it was somebody else that I used to watch it would go. I think mostly it was Reinhardt Bunky. And it was just phenomenal to see those people and to hear the singing. And you don't understand the language, but you know when praises go up, it's a it's a heavenly language and you can understand it because it's heavenly language. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's just it it's amazing. And I think I'm gonna go back and watch some Ryan Hart Bunky stuff now. <laughs> I'm gonna have them send me some of the worship music, some of the music that they're that we'll get to hear while we're there, so that we can become familiar with it mm -hmm. before we get there. Yeah, that little clip you sent us with the children was amazing. Yes. I I get excited when they send me the clips of the children. And and the children just dancing and celebrating and you know they they teach the children early to give God praise. <laughs> mm -hmm. They teach them what we should be teaching our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but anyway mm -hmm. thank you guys for bearing with me tonight we are going to continue talking about love we're mm -hmm. going to talk about it until we get it we're going to talk about it till we have a better understanding and after all we do after all we say we ain't done nothing if we don't have love in our heart Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what the word says. Mm -hmm. Take it out. Take it out. Yeah, you just laid there and just. just um, Jonathan Butler saying, falling in love with Jesus is the best thing. I never done. Honey, honey. Yeah, that, I, that Jonathan mm -hmm. but, uh -huh. Butler. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with Jesus. Yes. And it is. It is the best thing that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. I've been in love before. I know what real love feel like. Yes, ma'am. I know what real love feel like. Mm -hmm. The love of the Father is real. Mm -hmm. I've yes. had natural love and I know what it feel like. I've had that. that I, I've had it. But to to have the love of Christ abide in my life, ain't nothing like it. Never said I was perfect. <laughs> I am the most flawed person. Bishop and I going to battle to the wit's end about this. I am the most flawed person I know. I have the most, I have the most need for God. But when I read the scripture, the woman with the alabaster box. Come on. Come the on. The alabaster, uh -uh, take that to the laundry room. He said, <laughs> to whom I've forgiven the most. That's who loved me the most. Mm -hmm. See, if he ain't had to forgive you or nothing, mm -hmm. you don't understand his love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that he loved you, but he's had to forgive me for a whole lot of stuff. Me too. I mean, a whole, 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 whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's still doing it. He's still working a work on this here girl named so. Jenny Parker. And mm -hmm. I have to tell him thank you because I know. It ain't even a I think. It's a I know mm -hmm. that if he didn't, I wouldn't be here today. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. My daughter said, Mom, Amen. you you gotta go. What are we gonna do? What is what is your the theme of your birthday? And I said, Baby, I don't care what it is as long as it's got life in it. I said, because for the past few years, every birthday I've been at death's door. Every mm. birthday. I've been battling for my life every year. Wow. And so it doesn't matter what you what it is as long as it's got life in it because I'm living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, this year, so far, thank you, God. My doctor told me that she said, I'm so happy. She said, because you're not where you were. She said, yeah, you may have to use your inhaler more. She said, use the inhaler and still breathe. You're okay. Praise mm -hmm. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. She said, but Amen. your results are good. I go back after my birthday. I told her, I said, listen, my children are taking me to Las Vegas for my birthday. I said, and I'm going. I said, I'm going to Gordon Ramsay's. I'm going to eat. I can't wait. I, look, they gave me reservations, <laughs> girl, at Gordon Ramsay's. Anybody that know me know I love Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. We're going to the pub. We're going to the Gordon Ramsay's pub, but we had to have reservations. Right. I'm so excited that I'm going to Gordon Ramsay's. I'm going to get to eat from his menu. <laughs> <laughs> excited. But I'm living. Praise I'm God. living. Praise I'm, God. I'm Thank alive. You, Lord Thank you, Lord. I'm dying to my flesh, but I'm Thank alive. Thank you. I'm alive. I'm, alive. I'm not on you. my sick bed. Nobody got to give me no bath. Jesus. Listen, I'm alive. I, 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 all that has had to happen. Somebody had to wash me. Somebody had to feed. Yeah. Somebody had to help me stand up. Somebody had to help me sit down. Somebody had to help me lay down. Somebody had to help put my clothes on. Somebody had to help Jesus. take my clothes. I done been through all of that. Well, I'm alive. Yeah. You're alive. Amen. I'm alive. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And I'm Thank dying. You, I'm dying to the skin. I'm Amen. dying to the skin that I'm in that I might live by his spirit. Amen. Yes. And that's what matters to me. Mm -hmm. That matters to me. Thank you guys for, for dealing with me, for putting up with me. EJ told me, he said, Mommy, you slow down so you can breathe. You're going to be all right. All right. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. I said, I said Thank you, Jesus. look at this boy. You, I'm supposed to be telling him how to, how to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. All right. He's he telling me. Slow down so you can so breathe. And so you can be all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Smart. So, so I smart. slow down so mm -hmm. I can breathe. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Listen to yeah. the child. Honey, yeah. that the child will lead them, and that yes. one leads me. And that's, that's right. Amen. Amen. Excited Amen. about God. I'm excited about God. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about what he's doing. Amen. I'm excited about you guys Amen. and the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. And he adds no sorrow. Oh, no sorrow. No sorrow. No sorrow. Latasha, Latasha usually say, God doesn't bless us with burdens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 